Next fixtures Saturday the 2nd of September. 2017 Abbey Hay FA Cup away 3 p.m. Saturday the 2nd of September. 2017 Rudheath Social away 3 p.m. Sunday the 3rd of September. 2017 Prescott Cables Home, Flixton 2.30 p.m. Sunday the 3rd of September. 2017 Liverpool Marshalls Feds Reserves Home 2 p.m. ALTY Headlines the 30th of August 2017 Altrincham Reserves More the 30th of August 2017 Club Statement More the 30th of August 2017 Supporters Transport More other headlines the 30th of August 2017 Evo Stick Fixture Policy More the 30th of August 2017 Farsley Rue Refs Decisions More the 30th of August 2017 Workington Below Part More the 30th of August 2017 Reserves HIGHSCORING Game Altrincham Reserves were away to Congleton Vale on Tuesday night and lost a high-scoring game to the odd goal in seven. In a very good game, Alti went 20 down after 15 minutes before getting back to 22, thanks to two goals from Mux Harrop, one of which was a penalty. Congleton then went 32 up before Joel Swift scored a 30-yard screamer to level the match again. The referee then awarded a dubious free kick, just outside the box, shortly before the end, which was really well struck and clinched the game for the hosts. On Saturday, Altrincham reserves are away again, to Rudheath Social Agnostic Graylim. Club statement We were extremely saddened and shocked to hear, after the game at Witten Albion on Bank Holiday Monday, that a man standing near two Altrincham supporters had shouted racist abuse at a player. The club will not tolerate such unacceptable behaviour and will endeavour to find out who the culprit is. Should we succeed in identifying him, he will be banned for life from all future Altrincham and Witten games. We would like to thank our fans for pointing out the offender to the Witten stewards, who rejected him from the ground in a very professional manner. If anybody should know the person responsible, please advise an official of the club to enable us to take the necessary action. We thank you for your assistance in this matter. Evo Stick Fixture Policy When the 201,718 fixture list dealt altering a many Saturday 3 p.m. kickoffs against local teams such as Ashton United, Staley Bridge Celtic and Warrington Town, but Tuesday 7.45 p.m. kickoffs at the two furthest opponents, Workington 294 miles return and Whitby 268 miles return, many supporters were baffled. However, it now emerges that short-distance 3 p.m. matches and lengthy midweek journeys are actually the policy of the Evo Stick League. Writing in the Albion Review, Witten Albion and Evo Stick League chairman Mark Harris confirms the league's views on assigning fixtures. Following Albion's own midweek game at Workington last week, Mark wrote that I was recently asked why long-distance fixtures are played midweek. The answer is simple to play them at weekends would mean the more local derby fixtures being played midweek instead. For most, if not all clubs, it is the local games that generate the most income so, coupled with the motorway traffic nightmares so often encountered at weekends, that's why it makes more sense to prioritise the local games. Of course, it'd rather take a trip like the one to Workington early in the season rather than on a freezing cold Tuesday in January supporters transport TASC's Mark Eckersall confirmed recently that due to its close proximity task will not be running transport to our FA Cup opponents on Saturday the 2nd of September, Abbey Hay 13 miles away. This is because it is uneconomic to do so and supporters can get there by other means. However, Mark adds that we will be running travel to Barwell on Saturday the 9th of September and will also be taking names for an interest list to see if we can get the numbers for Workington on Tuesday the 12th of September. These lists will be available during this week so keep an eye on the website and bookings will be available by phone at the club or at the Lancaster game on Tuesday the 5th of September. Evo Stick Premier News The Whitby Gazette reports that Whitby Town have placed forward Mikey Roberts on the transfer list. A club statement said, The striker has found opportunities limited with the club since the start of the season and will be allowed to move on by the club. Roberts is well known for his energetic displays up front and has vast experience around non-league football in the North East, including spells with Gisborough Town and Spennymoor Town. Any interested parties must go through first to manager Chris Hardy on 07837264188 and not Mikey Roberts himself.
Also in Yorkshire, Farsley Celtic report that Bank Holiday Monday saw Farsley play the final league fixture of the opening month of the campaign as they travel to Sherian Park to take on Shore Lane AFC. Unfortunately it saw Farsley succumb to a second-half goal from excelled Damien Reeves to end their unbeaten start to the new season. The Celts boss gave his reaction to his squad's first taste of defeat 24 hours after the game, stating, I'm disappointed that we've lost and I think it's harsh on the players who definitely deserved something out of the game. Having had chance to watch the game back, big decisions went against us and certainly cost us today. I felt at the time the challenge on Isaac in the second minute was a stoned wall penalty and having seen it again it's unbelievable that it WASNT awarded. All we want the officials to do is make the correct decision and unfortunately in this instance he got it badly wrong. The opening goal in any game is so important and that would have presented us with an excellent opportunity to go ahead. Adam offered the following observation on the Shaw Lane winner, the decisive goal was well worked by them and the one time we've been opened up, we've been punished, but the final touch by Damien Reeves is a yard or offside and that is extremely frustrating. The initial shot from Aiden Chippendale may have been heading goal bound, but the final touch was by Reeves who is offside and it should NT have stood. However, the Farsley manager was quick to praise the efforts of the team on the day, adding the reaction by the players after falling behind was fantastic and they pushed right until the end to get an equaliser, but we couldn't find that bit of quality in the final third. I'm not unhappy with the effort or application of the players. I felt yet again we were defensively solid and dealt well with the threat and physicality of Shaw Lane. However, Shaw Lane are a good team with strong, experienced players and will be difficult to beat, especially at home. Adam, though, put the loss into context, saying for us now it's a case of putting this result behind us, not getting too down and trying to win our next game which is another challenging match this time in the FA Cup against Staley Bridge Celtic. We knew we were going to lose the odd game here and there, as most teams in the division already have, and were only six games in, so yes it's disappointing, but a result we will bounce back from him sure. Of the same game, N.I. Yorkshire says, Super Sub Damien Reeves scored within seconds of coming on against his former club Farsley Celtic to lift Shaw Len up to third. Reeves, who was a vital member of the Farsley team that won promotion to the Conference National in 2007, capitalised on a defensive mistake to put the Ducks ahead in the 71st minute. Farsley threw the kitchen sink in the final few minutes. Shaw Lane AFC Stuart Bembo Lita, Serrant, Kieran Lugsden, Kelvin Lugsden, Qualter, Burn Chippendale 61, Harris, Clayton, Norris Reeves 70, Walker Abidaki 92. Subs not used Lenyon, Chilaka. Farsley Celtic McKibben, Porrid DC 77 Baldwin, C. Atkinson, Pollard, Clayton, Priestley Watson 77, B. Atkinson, Walshaw, Cartman, Walker Marshall 77. Subs not used Parkin, Trenary. Exalty players are in bold in the above list. News of last Saturday's visitors comes from Colville Town where the club have unfortunately been informed that coach Steve Walker has decided to take a break from football and leave his role as first team coach. Due to work commitments and travel, Steve felt that he couldn't put the time and effort in that the club and role requires at this level of football. Steve has played a massive part in helping Colville reach the Evo Stick Northern Premier and has been an ever-present figure in the dugout since Tommy and Mark took over. The role will now be filled by current staff unless otherwise stated. Workington drew at Whitby on Monday and from Workington we learned that both sides looked a pale shadow of the teams which did so well last season but is that down to the demanding bank holiday weekend schedule or general drop in standards it would be harsh to criticise either team for their efforts on a very warm afternoon but, from a Reds perspective, this was another opportunity lost with three points there for the taking. The fact that they're not firing on all cylinders is a concern with some players carrying injuries and others struggling to find consistent levels of form. For the fourth game in a row, they found the opposition goalkeeper enjoying his 90 minutes at our expense. Either there are some very good keepers out there at Workington lack that killer instinct in front of goal. We have to go with the latter theory, of course, and address a problem which sees the team dominating but, repeatedly, failing to win. On the evidence of this encounter, it is easy to see why both Town and Reds are languishing in the lower half of the table instead of mapping out a promotion challenge. Confidence is at a lower bin both camps it would seem, illustrated perfectly by the game's first incident after just 10 minutes. 
Sam Smith sunned characteristic rash challenge on Kieran Willett G earned the home side a penalty but a poor spot kick from the latter was easily smothered by Aaron Taylor. Town got the noses in front after 56 minutes when Willett G took advantage of a moment's uncertainty in the Reds' defence. He collected the ball and drove it into to the far corner of Taylor's net. Within three minutes, though, the Cumbrians were back in the game when Matty Douglas became the fifth different scorer for Reds throughout August. Anthony Wright worked the ball out wide to Connor Tinian and his low cross was met at the far post by Douglas who gleefully headed home the equaliser. Reds should have gone on to win from the point but there was never the conviction to suggest they would. Joint boss David Hewson was left to reflect on a frustrating weekend saying, we could easily have obtained six points over the two games. But have two to show for our efforts. The 29th of August 2017 Witten Albion 02 Altrincham above Sam Sheridan, Ben Harrison, Tony Thompson and James Jones combined to keep Witten at bay. Altrincham made it three successive wins after a particularly impressive first half performance. Match report here, it's Abbey Hay in FA Cup Abbey Hay defeated Main Road 21 at Brantingham Road in Monday night's FA Cup preliminary round replay. So LT will travel to Gorton next Saturday for the first qualifying round. Abby Hayes' scorers were Robert Swallow 10 minutes and Reese Webb 88, with Main Road's Matthew Morgan scoring a 90th minute consolation goal. 189 spectators watched the match. Saturday's gate sat. 254 Ashton United won for Buxton Greg Young scored for Buxton at 227 Colville Town 2 0 Miklover Sports at 372 Hales 0 in Town 0 2 Sutton Coldfield Town at 354 Lancaster City 1 0 Staley Bridge Celtic at 444 Marino for Warrington Town Sean Williams scored twice from the spot at 529 Matlock Town 2-3 Grantham Town at 352 Nantwich Town 2-2 Barwell Clayton McDonald scored an own goal playing for the Dabbers at 522 Russell Olympic 1-2 Star Bridge at 287 Shore Lane 1-0 no Farsley Celtic Damian Reeves netted the goal at 12-26 Stafford Rangers 0-1 Hensford Town at 288 Whitby Town 1-1 Workington at 754 Witten Albion 02 Altrincham Old Boys as Ramsbottom United beat Radcliffe Borough 30, Sam Heathcote scored one of the goals. At our neighbours Trafford, James Dean netted the home goal in a 1-1 draw with Atherton Collieries. After the Colville win LT assistant manager Neil Sawville was interviewed after the GAMW with Colville Town and this can be seen here. FA Cup first qualifying round Saturday the 2nd of September 2017 Northern and Midlands fixtures only. 1 Peniston Church v Whitby Town 2 Albion Sports v Barlick Town 3 City of Liverpool v Nantwich Town 4 Warrington Town v Grimsby Borough 5 Ashton Athletic v Bamber Bridge 6 Kidsgrove Athletic v Clitheroe 7 Staley Bridge Celtic v Farsley Celtic 8 Marine v Ashton United 9 Shore Lane Association v Radcliffe Borough 10 Scarborough Athletic v Workington AFC 11 Bottisford Town v Shildon 12 Cleethorpes Town v Atherton Collieries 13 Colm v Lancaster City 14 Nosset Town v Concert AFC 15 Hyde United v Kendall Town 16 Droylston v Colwyn Bay 17 Abbey Hay v S Altrincham 18 Skelmersdale United v Handsworth Paramore 19 Buxton v Frickley Athletic 20 Whitley Bay v Newcastle Benfield 21 Sunderland RCA v Liversedge 22 Mosley AFC v 1874 Northwich underscore 23 Whitton Albion v South Shields 24 Hales Owen Town v Basford United 25 Boston Town v Hensford Town 26 Kempston Rovers v Wisbeach Town 27 Loughborough Dynamo v Sour Bridge 28 Market Drayton Town v Alvechurch 29 AFC Mansfield v Dunkirk 30 Soham Town Rangers v Westfields 31 Peterborough Sports v Stafford Rangers 32 Russell Olympic v Potton United 33 Sutton Coldfield Town v Barwell 34 Street Ives Town v Colville Town 35 Grantham Town v Hollbeach United 36 Hormond v Matlock Town 30 
27 Tividale VAFC Rushton Diamonds 38 Lincoln United v Redditch United 39 Chapshire Dynamo v Leak Town 41 Stratford Town v Newcastle Town 42 Kings Lynn Town v Coles Hill Town 43 Micklover Sports v Hinkley AFC 44 Boldmere Street Michaels v Chase Owen 45 Yaxley v Deerham Town the 28th of August 2017 Witten Albion 02 Altrincham above Alti celebrate their opening goal. Altrincham made it three successive wins after a particularly impressive first half performance. Victory took them into to the top half of the table, but the game was marred by three additions to Alta's growing injury list. Altrincham took a 15th minute lead when Hume collected a long ball and fed pool. He placed an excellent rising shot into the net from just outside the box. However, Alti then lost right back Richmond to a foul which the referee failed to see. With fullbacks Short and Disney missing this game through injury, the loss of makeshift fullback Richmond, a midfielder by trade, must be a concern to the management. But a superb strike from outside the box by former Witten man Josh Hancock made it 20 for the visitors in the 37th minute. After the break, LT also saw Densmore hobble off and then Hume departed after an earlier knock. Witten had more of a game in the second half but Alti's makeshift backline, featuring midfielder Taylor at right-back, and centre-back Hannigan at left-back flanking Harrison and Jones, kept a clean sheet. Match report here, Bank Holiday Fixtures Monday 28 August Ashton United 14 Buxton Colville Town 20 Micklover Sports Haley's Owen Town 02 Sutton Coldfield Town Lancaster City 10 Staley Bridge Celtic Marine 04 Warrington Town Matlock Town 23 Grantham Town Nantwich Town 22 Barwell Russell Olympic 12 Star Bridge Shore Lane Town Farsley Celtic Stafford Rangers 01 Hensford Town Whitby Town 11 Workington Witten Albion 02 Altrincham Witten Albion and Altrincham live coverage. You can follow this fixture via this website's minute by minute text updates by clicking on the icon below. Alternatively, Radio Robin's coverage of the game is outlined below as well. Brian Flynn announces that Radio Robin's, sponsored by Ashley Mowers Garden Machinery, is providing full live commentary of Monday's game. The commentators are Paul Salt and Ian Watmore, and the match summarizer is John Edwards. Coverage starts at 2:40 p.m guidance for listening to Radio Robins there will be four ways to listen to Radio Robins via Mixlr or the Radio Robins website. Open the page in any web browser and the broadcast should start automatically. Please note that the four player options Windows Player Real Player Quick Time Winamp will not work now. B download and install the Mixlr app on Android devices from the Google Play Store. Start the app and search for Radio Robins. C download and install the Mixlr app on Apple devices from the Apple Store. Start the app and search for Radio Robins. D there is a temporary Wix website here. Before the game at Witten the Northwich Guardian says of the Witten Albion v Altrincham game on Monday that by distance, it's the biggest game in the Northern Premier League's top flight on Monday. Promoted Witten have surprised almost everybody, save perhaps for manager Carl McCauley, by starting the season with a five-match unbeaten sequence that has earned them a share of the lead in the Premier Division table. Visitors Altrincham proved too strong for Colville yesterday, and have won back-to-back -back matches following a 10-victory at home to Whitby in midweek. It appears an early wobble, which saw them lose two of the first three games may be behind them. Gary Martindale, Whitten Albion's assistant manager, said, These lads are annoyed they haven't won all five games, and it shows how far we've come, I guess. Of course, and being serious, we'd have snapped off your hand had you offered us a chance to be unbeaten going into the game against Altrincham, no two ways about it. Inform Witten have lost only one of the past 23 league games in front of their own supporters, turning Wincham Park into a real fortress. Man to keep an eye on is Prince Hayward. Has been among Whitland's most consistent performers in the season's opening month. The 25-year-old has excelled in a central role after playing most of last term in a position wide on the right of midfield. Fullback Matty Devine Hamstring was not risked for Saturday's trip to Barwell, and has sat at the past two games. Frontman Rob Hopley was rested for the trip to Leicester Barwell, while attacking midfielder Ben Greenop was included in the squad for the first time since completing a transfer from Vauxhall Motors earlier this month. 
Familiar faces in the Altrincham side defender Ben Harrison and wide man Josh Hancock will need no introduction to Witten Albion supporters after playing a key part in the club's promotion success via the playoffs in 2012. Striker Tom Pierce is another to have played for the Northwich club previously, making a handful of appearances as a substitute four years ago while on a youth loan to the club from Chester. Most recent meetings Altrincham 2 Witten FA Cup 2 QR, October 1, 2011 Altrincham 40 Witten Cheshire FA Senior Cup January 20, 2009 Witten 03 Altrincham Cheshire FA Senior Cup September 25, 2007 Admission Adults £10, Concessions Ope Students £7, Under 18 £3, Members of Home Armed Forces Free, Parking Free at the Ground. Mike Garnett reminds us of the statistical record against Albion. Although Alti shade the number of victories, Witten have a significant lead in goals scored. At home, P83 W48 D17 L18 F185 A126 away P77 W17 D16 L44 F92 A168 neutral P4 W1 D0 L3 F4 A5 all P164 W663 3 L65 F27928295 Colville match highlights Alti TV has highlights of Altrincham v Colville Town here. FA Cup opponents next Saturday, Altrincham travel to either Main Road or Abbey Hay in the FA Cup first qualifying round. The two Manchester clubs meet today Monday in the preliminary round replay. Last Saturday they had contrasting fortunes as Main Road lost 0-5 at home to City of Liverpool FC, whilst Abbey Hay secured a 20-win away to Northwich Victoria, thanks to goals by George Noon and by Nito Lowe in front of a crowd of just 91. The 27th of August 2017 Altrincham 4 Colville Town 2 Altrincham's win lifted them to 14th in the Evo Stick Premier North. Above Gavin Rathburn's image shows Jordan Hume hitting the deck during his hard-working performance in the game. Match report here, next opponents Witten Albion having played bottom placed Colville Town on Saturday, Altrincham are away to joint league leaders Witten Albion on bank holiday Monday 3pm. Witten are unbeaten after three wins and two draws, although they have only scored five times so far. At the back, they have conceded just twice. And after playing a team we had never previously played Colville Town, we now face the club in this division against whom we have played the most. Mike Garnett reminds us of the statistical record against Albion. Although Alti shade the number of victories, Witten have a significant lead in goals scored. At home, P83 W48 D17 L18 F185 A126 away P77 W17 D16 L44 F92 A168 neutral P4 W1 D0 L3 F4 A5 all P164 W663 3 L65 F279 A295 Witten Albion play just 12 miles from Alti at Wincham Park, Chapel Street, Wincham, Northwich CW96 DA. Reserves result Altrincham FC reserves lost 21 at Billinch on Saturday. The next game is on Tuesday 29th when they are away to Congleton Vale 7pm. ALTY TV Alti TV's highlights from the 10 win over Whitby Town on Tuesday here and Michael Ripley photographies photos from that match are here. Gates Saturday's attendances were, at, 592 Altrincham 4 2 Colville Town at, 162 Barwell 01 Witten Albion at, 278 Buxton 2 1 Hales Owen Town at, 176 Farsley Celtic 1 0 Russell Olympic James Wallashaw's penalty settled this game at, 244 Grantham Town 2 0 Whitby Town at 412 Hensford Town 1 1 Lancaster City at 183 Micklover Sports 1 2 Nantwich Town at 285 Staley Bridge Celtic 01 Shore Lane Tat 639 Sourbridge 02 Marine at 193 Sutton Coldfield Town 02 Ashton United at 243 Warrington Town 2 Matlock Town at 418 Workington 00 Stafford Rangers NW News at Ewan Fields, Hyde United drew 1-1 with Rams Bottom United. The Rams' 90th minute goal was scored by Altiloni Talani Armitola. Andy Owen scored one of the goals as Skelmersdale United defeated Gloss at North End 20 on Saturday, the 26th of August 2017 Altrincham 4 Colville Town 2 above, Alti celebrate after James Poole's goal.
In a very entertaining game, Altrincham let slip a twa-goal lead before recovering to win the game by a final twa-goal margin which was, perhaps, a little harsh on Colville. Despite lacking four players through injury or absence Miller, Amos, Densmore, Harrop, Altrincham's bright start got them two goals clear in only the 13th minute. Match report here. Saturday fixtures Saturday the 26th of August 2017 Altrincham 42 Colville Town Barwell 01 Witten Albion Buxton 21 Hales Owen Town Farsley Celtic 10 Russell Olympic Grantham Town 20 Whitby Town Hensford Town 11 Lancaster City Mclover Sports 12 Nantwich Town Staley Bridge Celtic 01 Shaw Lanes Arbridge 02 Marine Sutton Coldfield Town 02 Ashton United Warrington Town 20 Matlock Town Working to No O Stafford Rangers Phils Perspective Brian Flynn's interview with manager Phil Parkinson for Altrincham today is below. Phil said, We go into the bank holiday weekend looking to build on our first win of the campaign on Tuesday night against Whitby Town. We created a lot of chances and it was frustrating that we didnt put more than one of them away. Josh Hancock could easily have scored three or four times and Tom Pierce was very unlucky to have a class finish ruled out by the assistant referee flagging four offside, that was almost a carbon copy of what happened at Matlock last Saturday. I'm still not sure how we didnt get at least a point out of that game but we ended up on the wrong end of a 10 scoreline. We now face two games in three days over the bank holiday weekend and with less than 48 hours between this afternoon's home game against Colville Town and Monday afternoon's local derby at Whitlam Albion, we may well need to use all of the players available to me and Neil Sorville. Tom Hannigan completed his one-match suspension on Tuesday and is available again, so we now have more central defensive options after James Jones came in for his debut against Whitby and was a real steadying influence alongside Ben Harrison, who has been outstanding so far for us. John Disney Wright is still struggling with his ankle injury, fortunately Simon Richman has slotted in superbly at right back to cover. Sean Densmore will be available for the Witten game but it may be too early for him to be involved again, as he will have only just got back from the USA and may be suffering from the effects of jet lag. Max Harrop is away this weekend and not available to us, so we are not flush with bodies but I still expect to be able to field a strong team and bench in both games. Colville won the first points of the season, with a late goal at Grantham in midweek and are a big strong side that like to tackle. They have a couple of likely match winners in Masai McDonald and Nathan Watson and they have just signed Cleveland Taylor from Matlock, who we came up against at Bowerwell when Neil and I were at Nantwich. The fans played a massive part with superb vocal support on Tuesday night and it would be fantastic if we could repeat that at the J. Davidson Stadium today and at Witten on Monday. Appointment of supporters liaison officers Altrincham Football Club is pleased to announce the appointment of Mike Reeves and Alison Corsa as the club's first supporters liaison officers. Mike Wright is 26 years old, and was introduced to watching Altrincham by his parents. His earliest memories are of the 199,899 season when we gained promotion back to the highest level of non-league football as champions of the Unibond League Premier Division a long-term season ticket holder before heading to study at Aberystwyth University. Mike is now back living in Timperley, working as a care assistant and student nurse. He regularly attends home and away games. Alison Corsa left started watching the Robins in the 200,708 season and is now in her 10th campaign as a season ticket holder and is renowned for being one of the most vocal main stand fans. Get back in your box, shut up and sit down or two of her trademark barracks of opposition management. Alison inherited her love of football from her mother, who was a season ticket holder at Fulham, before the family moved north to Sale and started to watch Manchester City. LT is Allison's real team now. The creation of the supporters liaison officer SLO role was part of the five-year strategic plan and will act as a bridge between the football club supporters and the board. The role, which is backed by a UEFA initiative, is designed to ensure that fans have dedicated points of contact who will represent the needs of fans and ensure that the most common issues are raised at the highest level within the football club. The board believe that these two appointments can help establish real, constructive dialogue between the supporters and the football club and give fans a further vehicle by which they can put their thoughts and views forward on any subject they wish.
Allison and Mike will play vital roles in providing supporters with a link into the club, allowing fans to put their thoughts and views forward on any subject. Gathering feedback formally and informally from supporters, identifying key issues and opportunities and communicating these to the club. Communicating key information to supporters and other stakeholders through a variety of media, but including face meetings if required. Congratulations to both Allison and Mike on their appointments. ALTRI and CHAMS Strategic Alliance in the sale Altrincham Messenger We read that a strategic alliance between Altrincham FC and Altrincham Unlimited aims to bring the club and its fans closer to the business community, residents and visitors. Altrincham Unlimited, the town's business improvement district bit, has announced a new partnership with Altrincham Football Club as part of its wider experience Altrincham campaign. The initiative, which officially commenced on August 19 to coincide with Altrincham FC's first match of the season in the Evo Stick Premier against Stafford Rangers, will see the club and Altrincham Unlimited working more closely together to promote each other's events, assets and commercial opportunities. It will also see the club engaging more directly with bid members, and start to play a bigger role in Altrincham's wider regeneration and ongoing inward investment plan. Katie Bland, bid manager for Altrincham Unlimited said, For more than 125 years Altrincham has had a local football team on its doorstep, but many people who work, shop or visit here don't always think of it as a key part of the town centre's leisure offer, an excellent event venue or a major commercial asset. Similarly, we are aware that many fans, both home and away, who visit Moss Lane don't always then explore the rest of Altrincham, or don't realise we have lots of events and festivals going on during match days which they could also be enjoying before or after a game. Through this partnership we therefore aim to make the Robins a more visible and integral part of the wider town centre offer, and will encouraging visitors, residents and bid members alike to get behind the club as supporters and sponsors. Graham Rowley, chairman of Altrincham FC said, Despite the disappointment of relegation last season there is real sense of optimism and enthusiasm around the club and we feel that for too long we've not been as engaged with the rest of the town as we could be. By working more closely with Altrincham Unlimited we hope to make the club a more prominent part of the wider Altrincham success story, and we are greatly looking forward to make supporting your neighbourhood team something that both local businesses and local people can become really proud of, regardless of which league we are playing in. The relationship between the Altrincham FC and Altrincham Unlimited will initially see the club promoting games, offers and events through the Altrincham Loyalty app and other Altrincham Unlimited channels. In return, Altrincham Unlimited will get regular access to the club's various promotional platforms, including the Matchday program, Matchday announcements, the club website and the Robins social media feeds, to highlight what is happening in the town centre. It is also anticipated that as the partnership develops volunteers who help run Altrincham FC will become more involved in helping manage the town's extensive programme of festivals, and that Altrincham businesses will give more commercial support to the club through sponsorship, advertising and other promotional opportunities. FA Cup The BBC announces that it will broadcast Billericay Town's tie against Didcot Town in the first qualifying round of the FA Cup. Billericay will host the tie, which takes place on Saturday 2 September, kick-off at 12.30 BST. Billericay signed former Liverpool player Jermaine Pennant earlier in August, while ex-England defender Paul Koncheski is the captain. A game from every stage of the 201,718 tournament will be streamed live across BBC Sports digital platforms. This will allow audiences to watch the game live on the PC, mobile or connected TV. Matches will also be available live and on demand on BBC iPlayer. Billericay play in the Ismian League Premier Division, the seventh tier of English football, and the side also includes former Premier League players Jamie O'Hara and Kevin Foley. Diddy Cot Town play in the eighth tier Southern League Division 1 South West. Old Boys The Evo Stick League reports from Glossop North End, who have signed Exalty goalkeeper Russ Saunders from Hyde, his second spell at the club after a short time in 201,415. Evo Stick Premier News Marina pleased to announce the signing of striker Scott Backcourt from Curzon Ashton. The 23-year-old made his debut in the 20-win at Staley Bridge Celtic on Tuesday and has had spells at Warrington Town, Clitheroe, Colwyn Bay, Skelmersdale United and Witten Albion. 
the 25th of August 2017 Altis Prophet from program sale Terry Surridge writes that the program shop, run by Campbell McClay, David Thorpe and Ian Boardman is a long-established part of Altrincham Football Club. Apart from a large selection of old Alti issues the shop has a wide range of football league and non-league programs. Occasionally, Stuart Roberts from Bradford, himself a collector of Alti programs, checks the old FLA issues with Campbell and sells at auction programs that are sought after by collectors throughout the country. Over the summer Stuart has been busy sorting through a collection kindly donated to the club and his rewards are seen in the photos he presents a cheque for £778.29 to the club. Seen above, left to tight, are Ian Boardman, Campbell McClay, Stuart Roberts and Dave Thorpe, in a photo which is courtesy of club photographer, Gavin Rathbone. Altrincham are very grateful to all who donate programme collections to the shop, which is located on the popular side of the J. Davidson Stadium, at its junction with the Golf Road End. Josh Hancock interview next opponents Colville Town on Saturday, Altrincham face a club they have not previously met Colville Town. Founded in Leicestershire in 1926 is Ravenston Miners Athletic in 1926, the club relocated to Colville in 1995 after being refused permission to upgrade the Ravenston ground by the local council. The current club name has been used since 1998 and from 2003 the club competed in the Midland Alliance. In 2011 they reached the FA Vars final where they were narrowly beaten by Whitley Bay. That year they also gained promotion to the NPL 1st Division South. In 2016, after two unsuccessful playoff matches in the previous seasons, Colville known as the Ravens after their original hometown were promoted to the Premier Division of the Evo Stick League. Colville played the Owen Street Sports Ground which was subsequently rebranded as the Manda Crook Shank Solicitors Stadium. It includes 240 seats in its 2000 capacity. The Grantham Journal reports on Colville's most recent game, a 10 win in Lincolnshire last Tuesday. Grantham Town were undone by a single late goal again, after dominating offensively throughout against the lowly Ravens. An early cross come shot from Colville's Tom McGlinch, he surely had a few home fans' hearts in mouths. In a rare forward move on 20 minutes, Colville's Jermaine Hollis lifted a sitter over the Grantham crossbar. Grantham goalie Kieran Preston brought former gingerbread Masai McDonald down on the edge of the box two minutes later and referee Mr Chester pointed straight to the spot but luckily kept his red card in his pocket. Preston went from zero to hero when he saved Nathan Watson's spot kick with an impressive diving catch. Hempenstall forced another couple of saves from Coatlin as Grantham continued to have the more chances, although the Ravens always looked dangerous on the break. The second half followed a similar pattern. The Gingerbreads had a let-off in the 76th minute when Hollis somehow fired over a sitter from inside the 18-yard box. Grantham had the ball in the Colville net a second time five minutes later, this time through Hempenstall, but once again the linesman's flag was already raised. With the game looking like ending in a goalless draw, the Gingerbreads were caught out in the 89th minute. In something of a scramble, Grantham cleared one shot off the line, followed by a superb only handed save by Preston, but the loose ball fell to McDonald who made no mistake from spitting distance. Evo Stick Premier News from the Lancashire Evening Post We learn that Lancaster City boss Phil Brown has backed his side to build on their unbeaten start to life in the Evo Stick Premier Division. Two draws this week, 11 at home to Mickelover Sports and no O at. Farsley Celtic mean it's four without defeat to start the season for the first Division North title winners. The Dolly Blues have come from behind in three of the games with Brown praising his side's character while backing them to start getting on the front foot in games. A busy bank holiday weekend brings a trip to Hensford Town on Saturday before Staley Bridge Celtic visit Giant Axe on Monday. We've got great resolve, work hard and are really organised and if you've got that in your locker then you can get something out of games, Brown said. We're hard to beat. We've just picked up a OO draw away from home against a team that have made a better start than us but we finished the stronger. Wed still scored five goals in three games before the which is about par for the course. If we can take the initiative in games and get the first goal then we'll make things really difficult for sides. A work in progress but I'm really happy. Brown has used most of his squad in the opening couple of weeks of the season, making four changes from the weekend for the draw at last season's title rivals Farsley. 
When I looked at the first few games I thought it used the squad, said Brown. We were going into the unknown a little, people needed to be fresh and it gave everybody a chance to stake a claim. You've got price season for that to a degree but there's nothing like playing for three points. I've not been rotating for rotating's sake. I've got this weekend to come and then I'll look to be a bit more consistent and the first 11 or 16 will be more settled. One player Brown will have to do without for the time being is goalkeeper Chris Cheatham who injured himself in the warm-up ahead of the draw with Mickelover. Josh Powell has come in and impressed between the sticks for the last couple of games. When I did my analysis of Mickelover, they seem to send most of the set pieces to the back post, the city boss said. We were sending crosses over for Chris and when he planted his foot his heel hit the post and he rolled his ankle. It was quite a nasty one to be fair and we're looking at four to six weeks. Elsewhere on the injury front Craig Carney, Ney, and Lewis Mayers, Hip, are working the way back into contention. Simon Wills is also struggling with a tight groin. News from our last opponents Whitby Town is that their assistant manager Lee Bullock has warned that the Blues face a tough weekend. The Seasiders side face a trip to Grantham Town on Saturday 3pm, before hosting Workington on Monday. Bullock has warned that, it's continuing the theme of the start of the season, Bullock said. It's two difficult teams when you look at last season and where they finished. Grantham is, there's no other way to put it, an awful place to go with the running track around the ground. We know what we're going to get from them. They're well drilled, hard to beat, like to smash it long and are happy for the ball to go out of play and take a couple of minutes to regroup. You've not only got to beat them, but you've also got to beat the place and the conditions such as the useless multiple system that, as soon as they're pen up, disappears. Workington will give us more of a football match. They're a good side and like to get the ball down more last season. It will be a different game completely to Saturday. The Seasiders are set to have a clean bill of health once again and could make changes following Tuesday night's defeat at Altrincham, with players like Mikey Roberts and Niall McGoldrick searching for starts. As for Hales O in town, the Sour Bridge News reports that Haley's O in town boss John Hill says his players have been their own worst enemies so far this season. The Yelts have lost three of the first four games and fell to back to back defeats when Saturday's 21 loss at home to league new boys Farsley Celtic was followed by Tuesday night's 20 loss at Hensford. Hill thinks slow starts are costing his side. He said, we do lack a bit of quality at the moment but we are giving ourselves a mountain to climb in the hour first half performances. We aren't defending our box well enough and that is setting us back massively. The goal we gave away at Hensford was comical as we failed to deal with a miss hit cross. Our problem is that we are starting too slowly and always trying to come back in games. If we could keep a clean sheet then maybe we'd have a chance. It started at Workington and was the same against Farsley and then Hensford. We were 30 down at half-time at Workington but won the second half and lost 31. We were 20 down at half-time against Farsley but won the second half and lost 21 and then were 20 down at Hensford but kept the score the same with as better second half. We can't afford to keep coming from behind. This week in training we'll be working on defending our box better. I D I D N T think we'd be doing this so soon but we have no choice. So many balls go into the box at this level that you have to be able to deal with them. There is work to be done and well make sure it happens. Hales Owen brought in forward Wade Malley from Bromsgrove Sporting this week but Hill said, without doubt we need to add more. We tried to freshen things up over the summer but it H-A-S-N-T worked. Wade Malley has been earning some good reviews and it'll be really good to work with him and see how he can improve. At Buxton this Saturday the Yelts could be without Cameron Steele Groin and Solly Harloney will Mellors Blair, who is facing a spell on the sidelines with illness. And in the same source comes news of Sourbridge, where Honest Glass Boys boss Gary Hackett admitted his side were playing well below the best despite topping the Northern Premier League table earlier this week. But Hackett was quick to praise his players' attitude and commitment after coming through a difficult sequence of games unbeaten. Star Bridge snapped up a pleasing 31 win following a long distance trip to Whitby Town last Saturday, which was followed with a 11 draw on Monday night at home to last season's playoff rivals Nantwich Town. Hackett said, He'll be quite honest and say we're in a transitional period at the moment and not playing as I would like us to do. 
We haven't got things right yet but we've still managed to grind out results, while trying to find the right balance. Against Nantwich, we got ourselves outnumbered in midfield and gave the opposition more ball than I would have liked, which is something I tried to address. But I couldn't fault the player's resolve. When you consider we set off for Whitby at 8am and didnt get back to the ground until 10pm. I was also missing five key players for the Nantwich game all of whom started the season against Matlock Town the previous week. And at HASNT helped that I lost Caledon Brown during the opening game through injury. Because HES are versatile, HES become a very important cog for us but HES picked up a knee problem that still ISNT quite right and he could be out for another three weeks. Starbridge return to the War Memorial Ground on Saturday when they play host to Marine, which is followed by a bank holiday trip to Russia Olympic on Monday. Hackett added, we have become a very difficult side to beat during a difficult period where we've played four games in the space of nine days. The players are giving me everything and the supporters can play a big part as well. The crowds have been very encouraging, considering it's a holiday period at the moment and it's important they get behind the side. According to the Stoke Sentinel, Neil Kitching was pleased with the way Stafford Ranges adapted to a new shape in Tuesday night's 20 win at Micklover Sports. The visitors took the lead five minutes after the breakthrough Dan Westwood, who then doubled his tally in injury time to seal a fine away win. Manager Kitching had switched to a diamond midfield on the eve of the game, and only informed the players of the change before kick-off. It took us a half hour to settle down to a new shape, Kitching told the newsletter. We had to play that because Mikulova are to a good side, and too expansive with the ball, for us to keep the shape we had played. We changed the shape overnight and put some information into to the players before the game. But we kept that shape really well, and got better and better as the game went on. In the end, we frustrated them, caused them problems, counter-attacked and got our two goals. Credit to the players, they've played the game plan to a tee the results sent Borough atop of the fledgling Northern Premier League table. The more the team can take on board the changes of shape that we put in place over the season to get us results, the better. With Lewis Briscoe deployed at the tip of the diamond, Bradley Fortnum Tomlinson came in for his first start up front alongside Westwood. He set up the first goal, and his pace caused Mickelover problems. Kitching admitted that it had been a tough decision to start Fortnum Tomlinson over last season's top goal scorer Carl Perry, but is pleased to have these options available to him now. It was a big call because Carl Perry did really, really well when he came on on Saturday, but Brad did as well, said Kitching. We felt that playing the diamond was a bit unnatural, so we had to have potentially two outlets. Westy will give us goals and runs in behind, and Brad has work rate and desire and is quick. Bradford's Telegraph Argus states that Farsley Celtic have had a very promising start to the season. Adam Lakeland's side host Russia Olympic on Saturday and, after four games, the Celts have twice as many points as the picks. Farsley are unbeaten in the four games and sit second in the early table, with James Walshaw and Nathan Carman plundering the goals. The picks lost their opening two games but beat Staley Bridge Celtic 10 last weekend and drew 44 at Barwell in midweek. Closer to home, the Thames side reporter reports on two local teams is Ashton United 1-10 at Warrington Town. A single strike was enough for the Robins to see off another early league leader as John Pritchard's superb effort took all three points. The visitors were forced into several changes with Captain Mark Lees on honeymoon, Cavill Kuswich to left back allowing Lanray Olapade to step in on the right side of defence. Just before the half-hour the Robins took the lead for the fourth successive game as Platt's pass found Pritchard in space and his swerving effort from 30 yards gave McMillan in the home goal no chance, a moment of quality out of keeping with most of what had gone before. Liam Tomset then forced a save out of McMillan with a swinging shot as the Robins got the passing game going and Aaron Chalmers then headed Pilkington's free kick over the top. Ashton team Carnell, Olipade, Ku, Granite, Chalmers, Roberts, Platt, Tomset, Pilkington, Chadwick 67, Pritchard, Dyke. Sub Bannum, Woodford, Dernan.